implementing conventional fairness metrics with probabilistic protected features. So I just want to start with a little bit of motivation. Um, in 2021, President Biden signed an executive order requiring all U.S. federal agencies to uh, perform disparity assessments for any benefits or programs provided by um, that federal agency. But the issue for a lot of these U.S. federal agencies is that um, they're restricted by law from collecting or sharing personally identifiable information. So what this means in practice is that a lot of these agencies that are trying to perform these disparity assessments, if they have access to these, to these protected features, um, a lot of the times it's for a very limited amount of their data, and their recourse for the rest of their data is to try and estimate these protected attributes. And as many U.S. federal agencies or just uh, governments and private companies in general increasingly use uh, these machine learning methods as part of their key decision-making processes, it's important that we understand the disparity induced by um, these machine learning methods, especially in this kind of situ uh, setting where we might only observe those protected attributes for a small proportion of the overall data. Um, and so in this kind of limited setting, our contribution is we propose two methods. The first is when you're given an existing classifier that's been trained on those estimated protected attributes. Uh, we want to be able to um, bound that disparity or be able to measure it in general. The second contribution is when you want to train your own classifier using those estimated protected, protected attributes. Um, but you like to bound that disparity or ensure that the disparity induced by that classifier is no more than some pre-specified threshold. So what I want to do really quickly is just um, outline kind of the, the formal setting that we'll be working in. And so what we're assuming is that a user will observe two different data sets. The first is their labeled and unlabeled data set. Both of these data sets have access to observed features X, a subset of which uh, Z we're going to call our proxy features for a binary protected attribute B, um, and then finally also a binary outcome Y. The difference for the unlabeled data set, of course, is that we're not going to observe that protected attribute B. Instead, we're going to uh, observe an estimated protected attribute that we're going to call little b. And just for the, the purposes of this presentation, we're going to treat the process for estimating that little b as basically like a black box. And so it takes as input those protected attributes, and then it outputs whether it's a probability or some kind of estimate, essentially, of that protected attribute. The other assumption that we're going to be making is that, um, obviously, the labeled data set is going to be much, much smaller than our unlabeled data. And we're going to be assuming that um, both these data sets are drawn from the same distribution. Uh, finally, we're interested in conventional fairness metrics, so that's why we're going to be looking at these metrics that can be represented as the difference of means, essentially, where when we condition on a different event that we denote a script E, right, we can cover most of the, the typical fairness metrics in the literature. Great. So as I've kind of already outlined before, in this fully observed setting where we, we observe the protected attribute B for our entire data set, it's pretty straightforward how we go about measuring disparity. But in this uh, setting that I've been talking about where we might only observe those protected features for you know, a small percentage of our data, and for the rest, we just observe those protected or estimated protected attributes, it's not really clear what we should do uh, if we want to measure the disparity. I think one natural heuristic is, why don't we just threshold those uh, probabilistic estimates, treat them as the true protected attribute, and then um, just estimate or measure disparity that way. But um, it's been shown that that can lead to statistically biased estimates of disparity. So we need other ways of, um, of being able to estimate our, or measure our disparity without you know, leading to or resulting in biased estimates. And so our approach or our proposal here is to, instead of trying to uh, treat those estimated protected attributes as um, like those true protected attributes, what we're going to do is just use the information that we have available to us, both from our unlabeled data and labeled data, to bound the true disparity. And the way that we're going to do that is through these two estimators that we construct. Um, the first is our uh, DP, our probabilistic estimator, and then the second is our uh, DL estimator, um, which we'll call our linear estimator. 
And just as quick intuition on both these estimators, the DP estimator is just the fairness metric um, or a weighted fairness metric um, where the weights are, are estimated probabilistic uh, protected attribute. And then the DL estimator here is just like our, uh, it's basically just the coefficient from the linear regression of our fairness metric on the protected attribute uh, little b here. And so what's nice about this kind of construction of those two estimators is that in the limit, it can be written as a function of the true disparity, d mu, and these two terms. Uh, the numerators for both these are just these con uh, conditional covariance terms and uh, different variances. And because we know that these variances are always going to be positive, what really matters for ensuring that we can bound the true disparity is um, looking at the signs of these conditional covariance terms. So in this case where both of those uh, conditional covariance terms are positive, then we're able to guarantee that we bound the true disparity between our two estimates. And what this means in practice is that if you give me an existing classifier that's been trained on our protected attributes, what I can do using the labeled, small amount of labeled data available to me is I can check those conditional covariance uh, conditions. Um, and if they hold, I can estimate DP and DL to give you bounds on the true disparity. But a lot of the times, I mean, this works in the case where you're given uh, an existing classifier, but it would be kind of nice if we could actually just train a classifier to um, already obey those uh, conditional covariance conditions that we have and be able to guarantee that the classifier that we train is going to have um, its disparity bounded by our two estimators. So we propose essentially a uh, constrained optimization problem where we bake in those conditions on the conditional covariances as well as uh, you know, setting an upper bound on our one of our estimators um, in order to get a, uh, a classifier, at least in this case, um, that has bounded disparity at a threshold alpha. Unfortunately for us, uh, this is a non-convex problem, so we're unable to use a lot of existing convex optimization tools available to us, but we're still able to get approximate solutions using a primal dual um, algorithm. All right, so with the time remaining, I wanna just do a quick uh, application, and in this case, we're gonna be using uh, voter turnout data from the 2016 election in the US, and these six states are pretty useful because um, for each of the, the voters, we have their self-reported race data. And what that means is we essentially have a ground truth that we can use to evaluate the performance of our method. Um, so the goal with this application, right, is we wanna be able to, if you give me a classifier trying to predict uh, voter turnout, I can uh, essentially bound the true disparity of, from that classifier with respect to both black and non-black voters. And then also I wanna be able to train my own classifier on that data um, where I specify I don't want the difference between black and non-black voters to be more than some threshold alpha. Okay, so for this first uh, measurement application, what we have here on the figure is each of the rows are the different states, the different columns are different common disparity metrics, and then the gray bar is a comparison method from Callis, Mao, and Cho, where they're using a robust optimization method um, where it doesn't assume access to a labeled data set. The gray dot on the plot is um, the true disparity because we're able to measure that because we have access to that self-reported race data. And then finally, our methods in blue. So the solid error bars show our method uh, or the bound essentially of our method from the two estimators and the dotted lines show the bound including the standard error on our um, estimators. So what we're able to uh, show essentially is that having that small amount of labeled data makes a big difference in terms of being able to have tight bounds or much tighter bounds on disparity. Um, and yeah, so that's for measurement. And then we move then to training where in this case, what we're gonna do is we'll just focus on Florida for now, but the idea is we'll take that data, we'll split it into train and test sets uh, set aside 1% of it to be like a labeled subset of data. And we're going to repeat this 10 times, but we're going to train a, a classifier using the constrained optimization problem I showed earlier um, to get us a classifier and to then look at the 
one, the resulting disparity on our test set, but also just like the overall accuracy of our classifier too. And so what we find in practice is that our classifier out of the comparison methods, which I'll go over really quickly, um, we're able to bound the disparity, but at the cost of lower accuracy as we have a stricter uh, bound on the disparity between the two groups. So uh, one of our comparison methods in orange is, is if you just train a classifier on our labeled subset, the other comparison method in green is another robust optimization method. Um, this one does use the information from the labeled subset, um, but it still does not successfully bound the true disparity. And then uh, uh, the last method is like a modification of fair learn where what they do is only use for, there's like two update steps in fair learn. There's one that has to do with like the, the fairness metric that you're interested in. And in that one, they only use the labeled subset. And then for like the accuracy um, part of their loss, they use the entire data set. So just as a quick summary, essentially in this particular limited data setting that we, um, at least in government and in some cases for private companies as well, um, where they only have access to protected attributes for a small proportion of their data, we propose both a way to audit existing classifiers to bound the true disparity and then also a way to train your own classifier um, to guarantee that your predictions are uh, have bounded disparity as well. So that's all uh, for this presentation. Happy to take any questions.